Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And a heavyweight news mashup video today, starting with Anthony Joshua, his training camp for Ruiz Jr. The rematch on December 7th in Saudi Arabia. Another day and another sparring partner is now known. So this brings out number five. So Tom Little, he has revealed he's in camp with Joshua, posting to his social media a photo with the former unified champion saying, some really good rounds with at Anthony Joshua. Thanks, Eddie Hearn for the invite i enjoyed it hashtag learning every day so little is the fifth sparring partner that has uh, been in camp or that we know of there will be more i'm sure there will be more to come that will come into camp so tom little there's hussein muhammad timothy moton albon pervisage and Derek chisora and little here he looks to be cutting a slimmer figure than he once did so clearly he's been putting in some good work in recent months and also probably within this camp in the limited time that he's been there and joshua himself is looking slimmer than he once did there was a a video that emerged last week for his birthday when there was a cake being wheeled in and here it is on screen joshua a lot of people have been talking about he looks like he has been trimming down so he was 247 and three quarter pounds for the first fight with ruiz jr that was june 1st in new york he lost that one obviously i think he's going to come in maybe somewhere around 240 to 242 in the early 240s has been a weight that he has looked good at before there was the dominic brazil fight and joseph parker he was 242 pounds for that one so if he is lighter that is going to sort of aid his stamina you would imagine but we'll have to see what happens in the next sort of few weeks because sometimes in that sort of tapering period just before the fight sometimes uh, heavyweights do end up putting on a few more pounds and joshua himself has fallen victim to that before remember the carlos to fight he sort of uh, blew up about 10 pounds in the final few days ahead of that one ended up weighing 254 pounds But I do think he is going to come in lighter for this fight. And that is the sort of general speculation among fans. How about you? What do you think Joshua will weigh for the rematch? And uh, in related news, Timothy Moten, who's currently in camp with Anthony Joshua, he's posted to his social media saying, learning so much this camp, I'll be a new fighter mentally and physically. Thanks at Tom Little for the picture, brother. Hashtag mayhem. Hashtag we work in. Hashtag gorillas only. Matchroom has announced its lineup for its Monte Carlo show at the end of November. So it will feature, and you can see here on the left hand side of the screen, two heavyweight fights. So Sergei Kuzmin will be up against Zhili Zhang, uh, and Huey Fury will also be on the card. There is no opponent for Huey Fury at the moment. And this had all been signaled by Eddie Hearn in the last couple of weeks that these names were likely to appear on the card. So we'll have to see what happens with Huey Fury, but I know a name like Martin Bacoli has been mentioned as someone who could join that card and actually that's not a bad fight him versus Huey Fury if in fact that actually gets made but maybe Huey Fury after coming up short you know three times in a row at world level maybe he would want a somewhat softer touch than Martin Bacoli who's looked very menacing in recent fights but yeah that would be a good gauge for both guys where they're truly at the moment so if that does get made I wouldn't mind it but getting to this other fight which is uh, Zhili Zhang and Sergei Kuzman. Uh, this is a decent fight. It kind of is a good crossroads fight for both because Zhili Zhang, he's been inactive since last year and actually he was meant to be on this same show a year ago but he had visa issues and that led to him pulling out and Michael Hunter coming in and then ultimately starching Alexander Ustinov. So that could have been Zhili Zhang sort of getting some good sort of um, shine uh, beating a guy like Ustinov if he had have been able to sort of get to um, the Monte Carlo show show but obviously visa issues sort of ruled him out but in terms of this matchup I'll just get to the press release and a couple of comments so this is Zhang's promoter Dino Duva of Rock Nation saying I've been telling the boxing world and media for several years that someday Zhili Zhang will be in the world heavyweight championship mix and I honestly believe he can win it but first things first, on November 30, Zhili needs to deliver the real goods against a world-class heavyweight like Sergei Kuzmin, and I believe he will do it in a way that opens everybody's eyes. After that, his historic journey to the World Championship will be in full force. I want to thank my good friends and partners at Matchroom Boxing, Eddie Hearn, Frank Smith, okay. I look forward to doing great things together for Zhili Zhang and his quest for heavyweight history. 
So I'll just get to Sergey Kuzman and a couple of other comments before weighing in on a few thoughts of my own. So Kuzman says, this is an important event for me. I took this fight as soon as it was offered to me. I know that if I want to grow and become better, I have to fight the best. My opponent has an extensive amateur background and experience. He is sensitive, but not the quickest boxer. We have started training camp and are preparing hard to win this fight. And then his promoter, Andre Ryabinski, says, I'm delighted that Sergey will return to the ring this year. This is great news for all of his fans and for Sergey as well. Yes, Sergey lost to Michael Hunter. He is a very good opponent, but this is boxing. Sergey has made certain conclusions and is preparing to come back to the ring right away. I think that all mistakes will be corrected. Sergey will return to his victorious route. So in terms of this fight, which I do like, this is uh, a good fight because it really is a bit of a crossroads fight for both because uh, Zhili Zhang unbeaten about 20 fights on his record, but really nothing of note. And he's now 36 years old. He was an Olympic silver medalist from well over a decade ago from the Beijing Olympics. And in Sergei Kuzmin, you've got a guy that's coming off a pretty one-sided and lopsided loss against Michael Hunter, who really did dominate Kuzmin in that fight, including dropping him at one stage very heavily so Kuzman looked very one-dimensional didn't really look like he had many ideas the winner needs this badly because Zhili Zhang is on the sort of edge of oblivion in terms of profile he's really got nothing on his record and he hasn't fought in a year and really he's at 36 years old it is go time for him if he wants to make any noise in the heavyweight division and Kuzman coming off that sort of loss to um, Michael Hunter he needs to prove that he can actually foot it at a certain level in the heavyweight division and to try to build back to something if he's going to make some noise within the division because after that loss to Michael Hunter I think a lot of people were saying what can Sergey Kuzmin actually do can he make any corrections he looked very sluggish very flat-footed in that fight didn't seem to really have any answer for the much quicker and skillful Michael Hunter who did seem to have a power edge at times in that fight but what do you make of this fight but getting back to Huey Fury so he's got a quote here as well I'm delighted I've got this date so soon after my last fight with Povetkin. I feel I've much more to give and want to keep active and improving my game. Monaco holds a special place for me as I've more or less spent a lot of my younger years growing up there. My parents live there and we've had many training camps there over the years. So it's really nice to be fighting on such a high class show. The fans will see a hungry fighter and no matter what adversity comes my way, I will keep pressing as I know all of the fighters out there are not above me. It is what I'm doing wrong myself. There are no excuses. I'm back and I'm ready to achieve my main ambitions in life. I hope this opportunity will put me straight back into the mix for another top fight and Eddie and my team will be the judge of that after my fight. So that is Huey Fury. And there does seem to be a theme from the Fury camp from his trainer as well, which is his father, Peter Fury, that it's all about what Huey Fury isn't able to do at this point. And it'll be interesting to see how the next sort of year or two pans out for Huey Fury, because uh, maybe it's just that the opponents that are sort of set in front of him are just better than him and are able to actually execute their game plan to try and nullify his. And I don't often think that there's, they, so they try to sort of say that there's no excuses and da 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 da, but then they end up coming up with a lot of excuses if you if you're about why he's not performing, why he can't seem to make things click. But often in some of the fights we've seen, it is also about the other guys executing a game plan that puts him off his own. So yeah, what do you make of Huey Fury in some of these statements? He's going to keep pressing. He's hungry that he's uh, not below some of these other fighters in the heavyweight division. I think the jury is still firmly out on that. Moving on, Derek Chisora has announced on social media he has a new trainer. It's going to be Steve Broughton. So you can see here on screen uh, a bunch of shots that he's posted on social media uh, working with Broughton. And it remains to be seen, is this just a short-term measure? Because obviously he announced a few weeks ago he would be having no more trainer for the rest of his camp and he would have uh, no one helping him in the corner, at least on a, a trainer sense, on fight night. So I'm sure there would have been the cut man and normal sort of uh, things like that. But now Broughton, clearly he will probably be doing both roles, the training and the corner work on the night. Is this just a short-term solution for a week or two? Or is this going to be a long-term thing? I'm sort of leaning towards the the former. What do you make of it? Derek Chisora with a new trainer, Steve Broughton, who, to be honest, I don't know a lot about. 
Moving on, New Zealand heavyweight prospects Junior Farr and Hemia Hugh are set to return to the ring according to BoxRec on the Friday, November 15th in Salt Lake City, Utah. So this will be a Lou DiBella promoted card. And uh, Farr and Hugh have both been out of the ring for a number of months now. Farr most recently fought in uh, June, that was uh, against Dominic Gwynn, um, 44-year-old Dominic Gwynn, who dropped Far in that fight, but Far recovered to ultimately get the decision. And uh, he, or he most recently fought back in July, that was uh, against Ali Kaiden in Saudi Arabia, knocked him out in the first round. And uh, New York Fights, actually, it reports on its website that um, heavyweight Devin Vargas is going to be Junior Farr's opponent for that card in Utah. So we'll have to see if that is officially confirmed. But in terms of an opponent, Vargas, who is 21 and 5 for his record, uh, that's there or thereabouts in terms of the opposition that Junior Farr has been fighting recently. Uh, I think a lot of people are waiting for the WBO ranked Farr to sort of step it up. He is 18-0 at the moment sort of see what he can do within the heavyweight division because he's a big guy decent talent but is a bit of a question mark on how far he can go and just going to box rec to the schedule for the upcoming days in terms of heavyweight action so on friday we have johan dorpa he will be facing luis pasqual out of mexico dorpa he's been out of the ring for a number of months uh, he was actually t- took a step back from boxing uh, for the birth of his first child so he's been enjoying sort of family life and welcoming his first child into the world and looking after it also on Friday, you have a card in Italy with Alan Babich, who is the Dillian White managed heavyweight prospect. He will be facing Ramazi Goga Chisvili. Uh, further down here, I'll just get to a couple of other fights of note. Uh, Peter Milas, the heavyweight prospect who's currently 14 0, who's been relatively inactive this year. This is following wins over Kevin Johnson last year, stopped him. Uh, there was also a win over Francesco Pianetta. Only the one fight in 2019 so far. I believe injury has played a part. Uh, Milas 14 and 0 facing Johnny Muller. This is a card in Germany. Uh, also, you have uh, going down further, Artis Bilker. I took, talked about that fight um, earlier this week. This is his comeback fight after being brutally knocked out by Derek Chisora. Further down here, obviously, the Chisora and Price fight. I've got some separate coverage on that coming. Uh, Jared Anderson, the new top rank signing, he will be having his uh, heavyweight debut against Daniel Infante. That is a card in Reno, Nevada. And as I reported earlier this week, uh, Frank sanchez Fore is going to be uh, facing Jack Mulloway on a card. Uh, this is on the Nathaniel Gallimore and Erickson Lubin card. Uh, Frank sanchez Fore is the late replacement opponent after FIA Jack but pulled out. But uh, Frank sanchez Fore surely, um, I would think, is the heavy favourite. He's the undefeated heavyweight prospect against Mulloway. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment, loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.